Let's bring John Bussey and the Wall Street Journal associate editor to talk more about this. And one of the reasons we wanted to play back some of the, those voters, John, that we had heard from throughout the week is that was all before Joe Biden's speech last night. And what stood out to me for some of these undecided voters that all voted for Trump last time around, Trump 2016 supporters, is that some of them hadn't quite jumped on Biden's bandwagon yet, even though they'd soured on Trump. And I guess the question becomes, did Biden do enough to sway some of them last night? What do you think? We'll see. And that was the intent of that speech uh, with the convention before, including a lot of Republicans, uh, some just like the Republicans that you spoke to just now, the Trump voters that you spoke to, uh, who said, look, we're switching our votes. We're switching our vote from Trump to Biden. So that was the intent of the convention and of the Biden speech was to spread the tent flaps very wide to say that there's a home in here for you. Uh, from a policy standpoint, but also from a person and character standpoint. But it's going to be very interesting, Connell, to see what Trump does now to respond to that at the Republican National Convention. Uh, they've had a chance to see what the Democrats did. They're going to learn from that, and they're going to deploy their strategy in the coming weeks. Right. Now, we'll be, as I said, in some of those states. The president's also going to North Carolina next week. We'll be there. Georgia, obviously, he has to win, and, and I think the same goes uh, for Florida. So if you're President Trump now, you mentioned how Biden tried to appeal, or at least you think he tried to appeal to you know, some of the undecideds. The president usually, in the campaign settings at least, goes after the base, tries to solidify the base. That's you know, his instinct politically, I think. But next week, he, your, your point is you, you think he needs to move to more of those people who haven't made up their mind. Well, I'm not so sure. Um, there's an excellent article on this at WHA.com right now. Uh, Aaron Zittner and Alex Leary sort of look at the numbers of what Trump uh, has to do and what Trump is trying to do right now. Their strategy is direct directed at this. Uh, and that is maybe not going toward the undecided, uh, not trying to get Democrats who are disaffected from the Democratic Party, you know, to vote for Trump, but instead to get a much greater turnout of that base that you just talked uh, about. Because 2016 not only showed that a lot of traditional Democratic voters didn't turn out, but the group that traditionally votes for President Trump, that is non-college educated people with jobs, um, that, that group did not turn out excessively in 2016. So there's a lot of room for him to generate more enthusiasm among that base, within that base, to get bigger turnout. For example, uh, this is from some Brookings Institute numbers that's in this Wall Street Journal story. 62% of non-voters in Pennsylvania were non-college educated working people, 62%. Right. Similarly in uh, Michigan, 62% and 67% in Wisconsin. Those are three states that Trump won by a tiny margin. So you could see him doubling down on his appeal to the base at the yeah. Republican National Convention. I think uh, one of the challenges with that, John, is that, and it just popped into my mind as you were speaking, I, there were two or three people yesterday in Pennsylvania I spoke with, and we, were, we didn't put them on the air, and the reason why is because they said to me right away, they said, I've never voted in my life, and I'm not gonna start now, and we kind of just chuckled and walked away. But if those are the people, then you, and they haven't voted in that 60%, Will they actually vote this time? Maybe they're non-voters. That's entirely possible. Um, and the Democrats also, uh, this is a potential headwind for Trump's strategy in appealing more deeply to this, this group. The Democrats also have a large number of non-voters who have traditionally voted Democratic right. um, uh, in their camp as well, that they're going to be going after. That's what the convention was all about. So you may see a surge in the Democratic side, just as you might see a surge in the in the Republican side, if President Trump is successful in getting those non-voters that are traditionally in his camp to actually go to the polls.